An important idea in physics is that when an object moves at some angle with respect to the horizontal, the object's motion can be broken into two components, a horizontal part and a vertical part. Doing this allows us to simplify complex problems in physics. Let's consider a ball that's kicked with a velocity of 5 meters per second at an angle of 40 degrees with respect to the horizontal. The ball's velocity can be broken into a vertical component, we'll call this Vy, and a horizontal component, Vx. So the velocity of this ball is composed of two parts, an x component and a y component. When solving problems involving motion in two dimensions, we'll often consider these two motions separately. Its motion in the x direction occurs independently of the motion in the y direction. So the next question might be, well, what is the ball's velocity in the x direction? What's the velocity in the y direction? We know how fast it's moving at that 40 degree angle, but can we determine the x and y components of that velocity? Well, in order to determine the component vectors, we should recognize that our velocity vectors form a right triangle. And recall that we can apply trig functions to determine the sides of that right triangle. One of those functions says, sine theta is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse. Remember, the hypotenuse is the largest side of the right triangle and is always located opposite to the right angle. And the opposite side of this right triangle is Vy. So to calculate velocity in the y direction, I would use the sine function. Let's substitute in numbers here. Sine of 40 degrees equals v in the y direction divided by the hypotenuse of 5 meters per second. So vy equals 5 times sine 40 degrees, which equals about 3.214 meters per second. What if I want to know the velocity in the x direction? Well, remember the cosine function gives us the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. Adjacent means next to. So I'll find out about vx, the side next to the 40 degree angle, using cosine. The cosine of 40 degrees equals vx divided by 5 meters per second. Rearranging this equation, I see vx equals 5 meters per second times cosine 40 degrees. So vx equals about 3.830 meters per second. How do I know if I did this right? Are these two velocities correct? Well, first of all, they seem reasonable. We should always check that when solving physics problems. I mean, both of the velocities we calculated are less than 5 meters per second, which we expect. Remember, there's another way you can determine the lengths of the sides of a right triangle that's also useful in this case. Let's use Pythagorean's theorem just to verify that we've done this correctly. We know that Vy equals 3.214 meters per second, and Vx is 3.830 meters per second. Pythagorean's theorem says that c squared equals a squared plus b squared, so 5 squared should equal 3.214 squared, plus 3.830 squared. And checking these values on the calculator verifies this within our precision. 
Remember, this equation can be useful in finding a missing value anytime you're working with a right triangle such as this one. So if we wanted to calculate how far this ball might travel in the x direction, or the maximum height that it would reach, we've completed the first step by breaking this velocity into its component vectors into vx and vy. Now we're ready to proceed with some further calculations on the motion of this ball.